Is she for real about to make another horse coat color video after making like 17 of them already? Yes, yes I am because they're super easy to make and I'm spiraling. How you Pony Pals doing? It's y'all homegirl Des and today I'm going to be telling you guys all about horse coat colors. Now of course you may have noticed that I had my older videos where I do coat color breakdowns. I showed y'all the base colors. I showed you cream dilutions, Roan, Appaloosa, the splashes. I showed y'all all that. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing that again, but this time I'm gonna be more, I was gonna say more professional, but more professional in my sense because you've seen my older videos. I talk really slow, I'm nervous, I'm in like a weird area, maybe the music is playing louder than I speak, I don't know why I didn't notice that until very recently, but yeah, we're gonna be redoing that. But at the same time, I'm gonna be going more into the genetic stuff. Now, I'm not gonna be the person where if you're taking a genetics course, I mean, you could use me to study, but I'm not gonna always use like the gen like technical terms. I'm gonna be using terms that make more sense to me or I feel would be better explanatory to the run of a mill person who's maybe not taking that class, but they're really um, interested in how these coat color genetics interact with each other and create the animal that they may or may not have. And before we begin, yes, I have my notebook. I have all my notes that are sitting in here because I'm a good noodle student and because even though I'm gonna be giving some explanations that may not be super professional and like academically, like super academically correct, I still need to like keep myself on track because sometimes I don't know what I need to be talking about at the time and I might forget something. So just know, if my head's down, I'm reading. I'm not just sitting here being all quiet and sad and talking to nobody because I can't make eye contact. What I'd like to mention is that not only am I gonna be speaking y'all in like more familiar terms and trying to explain these genetics to you guys, but also know that I am going to be speaking genetically because you can go literally not just, you can leave US soil and there are colors where there are different names in different countries and there's maybe different names within different horse registries. So don't get so hung up if I say, um, oh, that horse is a buckskin, but in Australia it's called taffy. You're like, no, that's a taffy horse. No, we know, I know, but I'm using the genetic terms for it. So, whatever your breed registration or wherever your country is, I'm using the scientific stuff so that we're all on the same page, if that you know makes some sense. Anyway, so I think we need to start with the white hairs. And the white hairs, we're talking about markings. Huh. So with markings, you've seen it like, it can be a horse of any color. And I do mean any color. There are even cremellos, those really almost white horses, like some of y'all be inboxing me these pictures of white horses y'all find on the internet because you heard me say that white horses don't exist. Yeah, they're Cremelo and Perlinos and you can totally see their markings if you actually like look, it's very subtle. But what the markings are, it's just white hairs. It's lack of pigmentation. So it superimposes whatever the base coat color is. So regardless, if my horse is brown and it has a marking on it, it doesn't make it, oh, that's a brown and white horse just because it had a face marking on it. That just means it's a brown horse with a white face marking. And of course the markings all have different names for the face. You have stripes, snips, blazes, bald faces, medicine caps. And it's not only just for your face, it's also for the feet. You got your fetlocks, your pasterns, half pasterns, stockings. And it also goes in for those horses that actually are a certain color and white. I'm just saying that the markings itself, it's not technically the color of the horse. So these white markings, these white hairs on the face, on the legs, and some of them on the body, that doesn't mean that the horse is technically black and white or brown and white. Genetically, it's a black or brown or whatever friggin' other color it is, because it's not white, because white doesn't exist. It's that base color and the markings. And the markings all have different names that we're gonna cover later on. Aside from markings, there are some other non-white markings that are gonna be very important for you guys to understand throughout this whole series. And this are 
points. <laughs> points are colors that are on the legs of the horse. It's usually just right above its hocks and its knees. And they can also be on the outer rims of the ear, the mane and tail, and a little bit on the muzzle, you know? Those are called points. And most of them are black. So when I'm talking about points, I'm talking about specifically the coloring of the legs that's different from the body with along with the mane and tail and the nose. And you will also learn throughout this that points may not necessarily mean black, but we're building on what we got, you know? So you will understand what points are, but as we go, it's gonna get a little buried. And it's okay, it's fine. As long as you know what points mean which is where they are located, and that's all that really matters. Another term that you guys may need to know is loci, huh. which is the plural version of locus. And all you have to know about loci or locus is that it's just the destination, the genetic destination. If you guys aren't like super into genes, you just imagine like, pretend this, my arm is a pair of alleles, that these are important, but they're a pair of alleles, and let's say my horse is black. Don't. This is not part of the lesson. This is just a demonstration. Um, but say the horse is black. So if it's black, that means where where did they find out that the color was black? Despite the horse literally looking black. Oh, right here. This is the black locus, and that is on. So. If it's on, that means the horse is black. That's all it means. It's just the location because you can even have horse like, well, the horse is black, but there's also a dun locus right here. The black is up here, the dun is right here. And it doesn't matter, you know, the dun could be on, the black is off, and the black is on, the dun is off, or both are on, or whatever the frick. It's just a location. That's all it means. So when I say loci, locus, it just means that's the location you might be interested in what its um, genetic name is, how it's notated. So I will say loci and locus from time to time, but it's not entirely too important for y'all that are just here to hear about colors. You're not trying to get into like the full, full on genetics, writing down scientific papers type deal. For the more genetic side, horses have eumelanin huh. and pheomelanin. Huh. Now eumelanin is responsible for showing black and slate blue colors, while pheomelanin shows the reddish to yellow shades. For eumelanin, it's actually very rare for the horse to show up as brown with the eumelanin really activated, but it can only show the horse as black or brown. That's why you never see horses that are black and brown. It's either black or brown. And why this is important is because there are horses that carry eumelanin and pheomelanin. Like, you know when I was talking about um, in my um, sun bleaching video with black horses, how there may be some horses that are like truly black, but the sun beats down on them and it lightens their fur. But I also warned y'all that there are some horses that are not like fully black. They naturally have those reddish or gold or brown hues. That is the eumelanin, the black, interacting with the pheomelanin, those highlights. They're interacting with each other, so they're creating a dark-based horse with some highlights. So they do work with each other. When it comes to horse coat color genetics, one thing that you need to remember is that there is bases, there are base colors, and then there's these random genes that come over and they dilute it and they dilute it in different ways. But just remember that there is base coats colors and it's just these random genes that are interacting with it. And for the most part, these genes take whatever color the horse is, like it's base color and they lighten it, but they'll lighten it in different ways. Now maybe you went through the horse coat calculator thing that's online and you're putting in the standard common name color for the dame and the sire. Let's say it's a black sire and a bay dame or whatever. And you click to the next one and it asks if one of the horses, like how do they carry the agouti and how do they carry extension? And then they says red factor and all this and you're like, bro, I don't even know what this is talking about. So, agouti huh. for a familiarity standpoint just means black. Does it have black on its body? As I have mentioned in the basic coat color um, video, I had mentioned that there are black horses who have black bodies, that means they have a black mane and tail, all that. 
And remember, we also said markings does not change the actual color of the horse. That means it's a black horse with some white markings, but that does not make it a black and white horse because horses cannot be white. They can have white markings, but they are not genetically white. So, what's actually funny that even though I just explained that agouti means a horse having black, black horses don't carry agouti dominantly. It's actually a recessive gene. The horse that does carry agouti dominantly is bay. And why is bay under this agouti after I said it's a horse that has black on it? Because bay horses are brown bodied but they have black points. They have the black ear rims, the black mane and tails, the black that goes up their legs. They have all that. And they're the ones that carry the dominant agouti gene. So just remember, agouti is a horse that has black on its body somewhere. It's got black on its body. But a dominant agouti char character, sorry, a dominant agouti character a dominant agouti carrier is bay, brown body, black points. Where a recessive agouti carrier, you get an all black horse. The next one I'm gonna talk about is extension. Huh. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but like agouti is like the agouti loci, the agouti locus. We're talking about extension, the extension loci, the extension locus. Extension is what's responsible for our brown horses, our chestnuts or sorrels, if you guys are really gonna twist my booty cheeks over it. But yeah, the extension is what gives only chestnut horses. And what's interesting is that horses, you know, they, but all, every horse has a goody and extension, but it just depends on, you know, if they carry a goody dominantly, a goody recessive, or extension um, as dominant. What's really weird is that horses can have, you know, one of the agouti genes and the extension genes, and it doesn't mean, like I said earlier, they can't create a black and brown horse. You can't have a horse that's bay and chestnut. You can't have a bay black horse. You can't have a black and chestnut horse. It don't work like that, because why? They work like switches. So the best way you can think is like, a horse is being made genetically, and at the very top, it's like, okay, extension, is the light switch on or off? Now, if the extension thing is on, the horse becomes chestnut. But if it's like, no, girl, I'm not on, extension is off, then we go to a goody, and then we figure out, hey, am I gonna carry a goody dominantly or recessively? If you carry it dominantly, bay. If you carry it recessively, it's going to be black. So it's never going to show up as both. Extension will mask a goody if it's the one that, it, that decided to win. It will not be black and brown in any sort of way. And that's just how it works. Moving on, we already mentioned what a bay horse was, which was a brown bodied horse with black points. But we also have something that's called wild bay. And this is a very rare occurrence where the horse is definitely bay. But as we mentioned before, with regular bay horses, the black extends up to their leg from their knees and above their hocks. Where wild bay, it's either like slightly below it or just a, even just a little bit lower. It's a rare occurrence. I just wanted y'all to know about it but she exists. And unfortunately in the color genetic test, it will not show up whether or not your horse is a regular bay or a wild bay. It's just gonna come up as bay. So this is really just a visual for you guys. So do what you gotta do. Now, even though I don't generally like the term because it's like, in some ways it's incorrect, but also right now, scientifically it is correct, but the existence of brown horses and I know in my videos I said, oh, if your horse is brown, brown body, brown mane, tail, all that, then that means it's chestnut. That is, that is true. That is true. But we're going to get more complicated than that because those are horses where you can obviously look at them and you're like, it's obviously brown. What kind of brown I'm talking about are horses that are so dark that you can definitely tell, like, you know, they look black. But at the same time, they don't look fully black. They look a little brown. Like I mentioned with the whole sun 
bleaching thing, bl true black horses turning lighter, or there's some horses that are actually very dark brown, that they look black, but they have some brown in them. That's what we're talking about. Those are brown horses. And underneath the umbrella of brown horses is seal brown, huh. which is actually, I needed to correct myself in the video that I made. I was actually right. Seal brown was definitely under the bay umbrella because remember the horse in order to be bay has to have a brown body black points seal brown is really interesting because not only is it a horse that is all it almost looks near black but if you really nitpick at it it's a brown horse you can see very subtle differences in the legs so you can make that dis um, you can decipher like oh it actually does have black legs but it has like really dark brown body like just right above it. it has the black mane and tail but also with seal brown they have some red yellow or really tan points um, and I and I mean like different points from like regular bay points the points I'm talking about you know bay has the black muzzle but maybe just a little bit near the muzzle there is that expression of the yellow the red the tan it can also show up just around their eyes um i think also behind the armpit a little bit but definitely in the flanks and hey that's a call back to the you melanin the very dark brown almost black horse interacting with the feel melanin which has the reddish to yellow tinges look at that see how it, see how it came back in see how it made it work it all makes sense. Maybe. I don't know. How are y'all doing? Dominant black is very interesting huh. because I've been told y'all like if the horse is black and it's black all over then it's a black horse but of course there's some horses that are like really dark brown and you can they almost look black and then they're near black. All the other stuff. Dominant black is its own thing and it's at this point it's not thoroughly researched like you know people don't know exactly where this gene happens because Dominant black is a whole different gene as we think of so far, what we're suggesting so far. Dominant black is its own separate gene from the agouti black that we had just mentioned. It also states that dominant black is actually weaker the, than the um, agouti black, which makes sense because let's be real, like I said, there are horses that are actually black, like in general, but dominant black are those jet black horses. We really don't see them. There are, honestly, that's why we're going through this book and all this other stuff. There is black where it's not actually brown, but you know, you can tell like, it's black, but I've seen a darker black than that, you know? It's one of those deals. Very interesting, unconclusive, but I did think that I should share that with y'all that there is a different gene that's called dominant black and it's separate from what we know a goody black. I was kind of debating whether or not I wanted to talk about the different shades of these base coat colors, but at the same time, I already made a video. I made a, actually a fairly recent video on the different shades of what chestnut could look like, what black can look like, and what bays could look like. So I'm going to skip that all together, and I'm going to talk more about other um, genetic controls. But I do want you to know that the shades of a horse can vary on multiple different factors. Like I said, environmental stuff, the sun bleaching them. They could be a really dark brown color, but then it lightens up more. Um, there's also like health in feeding regimens. Say if we had two horses, both of them were pretty much like the exact same shade. And then we decide, hey, let's give this horse adequate exercise and good feed. And that horse will be far darker than the other horse that we're choosing to use, which we're like, hey, we don't care about it, and we're gonna toss it into, I was gonna say toss it into a field, but like that would be the best case scenario. So we're just gonna say that it's grain ration is not the best, and it, that's it. We're gonna do food instead. <laughs> Great food, bad food. This horse is gonna be darker, this horse is gonna be lighter. Even though when they both started out, they were the same shade, it was the health factors that switched them up. The next thing we're gonna talk about in terms of genetic control is the presence of sooty or smutty. Huh. And sooty could be probably the biggest menace when trying to figure out the color of your horse because Sooty is when there are individual black hairs on the horse's body and it makes them appear darker. 
and it's really interesting because you know you can take a bra a bay horse and it could be a sooty it's sprinkled on top it's called sooty bay and it could make the horse look black like it's usually like on the top of their body so i always say like through their crest along the withers along their back and on their um hind quarters is black but everything else is brown and you're like obviously this horse is brown but there's some black parts of it that aren't the points that are kind of messing me up on whether or not i'm supposed to call this a black horse that probably has some sun damage or a bay horse i did forget to mention that sooty is not to be confused with shade where shading is like you know horse is a certain color but it's like a different shade of brown it's either a really dark brown or a really light brown sooty is less uniform so it's more of that sprinkling and it's also called black counter shading and another interesting point about sooty is that remember when i said with the extension locust remember that's what turns on our chestnut horses versus agouti which is the black having horses so it can be black or bay it can show up in the extension despite it you know supposed to be blocking out any black pigment because sooty is not part of the whole agouti factor it's its own thing of its own so it can interact with chestnuts that's why you might have some chestnuts that look a little darker on those um certain areas that I had mentioned earlier because it's a sooty chestnut. Are we all clear? Do we need to break it back? Do we need to go back to what the locuses stand for? Do we need to go back to shade? Do we need to go back to like what seal brown is? I only say that because I really don't like seal brown colors. It's nothing against the horse. It's just a color I don't like like gray. I say that it might be time for a review because we're actually going to move on to the last section and this is just other little tiny markings that aren't white markings and aren't necessarily colors of the horse that make you know oh if that horse has this color spot then it's this color no it's not one of those it's like the little additives the little accessories on the horse's body so if you're really confused about the basics of shade and the base coat colors definitely rewind the video but we're gonna move on to the last portion the last thing we're gonna talk about are bendor spots and those are spots that show up on chestnut horses it can be like a darker brown spot it can be a little bit more reddish or it can be black and they're really random and it doesn't mean there's something wrong with your horse but the genetic control is not entirely understood so really it's just a random mark on your chestnut horse and of course if you see it on a horse like a palomino you're gonna later learn that palominos are part of the whole chestnut gang but that will make sense a little bit later unless you watched my cream video from years ago then you'll be like oh i see why because they're in the same family because desmond told me like years ago or now if if you decide to look up that video dappling <laughs> is the pattern where there are dark areas and light areas where their white area like the lighter areas are more of like a sphere and then the darker area is like not usually like a full circle but it's like a little ring around it and because of its nature since dappling can change as horses age you know there's gray horses that turn dapple and then they turn that complete gray that almost white color there's other horse colors that also do dappling but because you know it'd it be switching up it's not exactly a really good identifier like a permanent identifier for horses you can also associate dappling with horses that are sooty it's more likely if the horse is sooty it's probably got some dapples in it so this next one's actually a really fun one we're going to talk about brindles <laughs> and chimeras and if you know what that looks like you probably were looking at me real crazy in the beginning when i said the horse cannot be black and brown or like the bay yeah really black and brown that's really it chestnut and bay can literally be the same shade except one has like black points and the other one doesn't but you heard me say oh horses can't be black and brown and you're like well des what does that mean for horses that are chimera where some of them even have white markings so they're tricolored or the horses that have vertical stripings like dark brown almost black stripings on their brown bodies why don't you explain that well it's actually very interesting because brindles and chimeras they're not thoroughly explained but i'm gonna tell you right now your horse cannot pass it on your horse cannot pass it on although it hasn't been thoroughly explored because there are not many horses that have this phenomenon going on 
There are about two theories as to why this may happen. So one theory is that this is a mutation of the X chromosome. If you remember, the X is the female chromosome and the Y is the male chromosome. So it kills the male. And this is due to a base change of the kappa light polypeptide gene enhancer in the B cell. Is that too much science? I, I feel like I, I, I never really said that word out loud. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I only say that's super funny because I mo I never said that word out loud. That is a word I read, that's a word I write down. That's never been a word I said out loud. So I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, that was a mouthful. But like, you know, slay. I said all that, I know what it is, but like slay. But remember, that's one theory. The other theory is that they were probably two embryos that fused together. So maybe the extension locus was on on one embryo, so it was gonna make it a chestnut, and then the agouti was on for this one, so it was gonna be bay or black, and the embryos fused, making that brown and black fusion brindle chimera of a horse. And that's really what I meant earlier when I said the brindle or chimera doesn't pass on. Um, you know, you can pass on some genetic mutations, some of them. So I'm gonna say like maybe for theory one, it's probably not totally impossible to get Brindle at this point that I have known so far and what I've read so far. Um, so it may not be fully impossible, but it's impossible if the embryos have fused because that's not something that is genetically passable. Moving on from that scientific discussion I had technically with myself, I'm alone in my room, but we're gonna move on to eye color. Now most horses have dark eyes with a pigmented sclera unless your horse is under the leopard complex. And if you watch my video about the breakdown of Appaloosas, you are at least familiar with what the leopard complex is. And those horses have unpigmented scleras. Scleras, scler I used to call it scleras and that's why I'm like, trying to not say it right now. Um, but also we have horses who can get amber and hazel eyes. And that usually happens when there is a horse who gets a dose of Cremello in his body systems. But it's a lot more likely when the horse has a dose of champagne or pearl. Um, those are two other dilutions. Remember, there's a cream dilution, a pearl dilution, uh, champagne. We're gonna cover that more and more or whatever. But those horses, they got nice little pretty eyes. But again, there are some horses with those amber hazel eyes, they're lighter eyes. There's even horses with blue eyes, like your Perlinos and um, Cremellos. I think it's more Cremellos instead of Perlinos. But those horses get thoroughly misunderstood because a lot of folk wisdom, that's what the book has denoted it as. I always say old people knowledge or something, but a lot of people think that because a horse has lighter eyes or blue eyes, that they're less likely to see, or they have more eye problems. And so far we're finding that horses who just have colored eyes in general, they don't have poor eyesight. It's just unfortunate that, you know, some horse ocular abnormalities, you know, it just happens to look lighter than the eye. It's just weird. If your horse has blue eyes, it can see. The last thing we're gonna cover is full color. And to be honest, the real rule of thumb is don't fully determine your foal's coat color until they had their first shedding because they can literally be born one color and then actually grow up to be a totally different one. Now most foals, they're born, they are paler than the color that they're supposed to be. Um, but the opposite can be said for some horses that are like champagne. Champagne foals can be actually a lot darker and then they shed out and they end up being light, shiny, and lighter than they were. And also this goes to show that, you know, these gray horses out here, they're not usually born with that lighter color. They're born black or they could be born bay or chestnut really. But, you know, they're a different color. The, you thought you got a black foal or whatever, and now it's gonna be ashy white. I just really don't like the color gray. It's not my favorite at all. And a lot of y'all be like, oh yeah, cause they get melanomas, right? It's like, no, I just don't like the color. I don't like, the, blue roan's my favorite color. I can't tell you why. 
Well, I like the color black. I like black animals. I like black and white looking animals. And of course, Blue Roan has like the black with the white hair, then it just looks cool. I just don't like grays. They don't interest me. I don't like them, and that's why I pretend to bully the gray that we have. Okay, guys, in a really quick review, we remembered that the extension locus, if it turns on, it creates a chestnut horse. But if that extension locus is off, we're gonna go over to a goody. A goody, if it wants to be dominant, we're gonna turn that horse bay. If it wants to be recessive, it's gonna be black. But of course, the black under the agouti is a lot different from the rare dominant black gene, which is still inconclusive and not fully researched. We also talked about, well, we just talked about eye color. We talked about brindles and chimeras. We talked about the foal being a much darker or lighter color than what it's supposed to be when it grows up. What else did we talk about? Because I talked about a lot of things. We talked about shade. We talked about how shading is different from sooty. And honestly, I can't remember anything else. And I'm gonna shut up because this is a video and you guys can redo all this stuff and watch it over again. So we're gonna stop right there. My next video is gonna be about all the dilutions and we're gonna get all nice and deep with some dilutions. But always remember to refer back to this video or any videos that I've mentioned if you got lost. Cause some of y'all be beginners and then try to dive in real deep. And it's like, girl, you gotta build. We gotta build on some things. Anywho, so my name is Tessa Washington and I hope to catch y'all view on a different video on a different day.